Now let's walk through the value changing algorithms, the algorithms that change the element values, which includes copy, move, transform, swap, fill, replace, and remove. And again, these are the variables will be used in, in my example, vec, vec2, iter, iter2, and pair of iter. First, copy. The function copy copies everything from vec to vec2. You have to make sure vec2 is at least as big as vec, otherwise it's undefined behavior. In this, in this case, vec2 has 11 items and vec has 7. So we are safe. Copy if copies everything that's bigger than 80 from vec to vec2. So only two items are copied to the beginning of vec2. Copy n copies n items from one place to another. In this case, it copies four items from vec to vec2. Copy backward does the copying from back to the front. So vec is copied to the end of vec2. One thing to note is the destination data range is specified with the end of the range instead of the beginning of the range. Number two, move. It moves items from one place to another. Now I have vector of string vec that has four strings and vec2 has six empty strings and I use the function move, move everything from vec to vec2. And as a result, vec2 has all the strings at the beginning of vec2, and the content of vec is undefined, although usually they, they are empty strings. So if the move semantics are defined for the element type, in this case string, elements are moved over. If they are not defined, the elements are copied over with the copy constructor. So if vec and vec2 are vector of integers, then the move function will work just like the copy function. Move backward, same idea as copy backward. All the data are moved to the back of vec2. And the alignment is made at the end of the data range. Number three, transform. It transforms the data with certain operation and then save the results at a different place. In this example, it uh, decrement every item in VAC by one and then save the result in VAC three. Transform can also take two inputs of data. Here it add the items from VAC and VAC two and then save the results in VAC three. So this is how it behaves. Number four, swap. It swaps the data between two places, in this case vec and vec2. You can think of swap as a two-way copy. Number five, fill. Fill is used to fill the data with certain value. Here I have a vector that contains all zeros. Then I use the function fill to fill the vector with nine. So this is the result. Fill n will fill n items with certain value. Here I fill three items with nine. So only three is filled in. Generate takes a value generating function to generate values and then fill in the elements. Generate n only fills n elements with the values generated by this function. Replace. The function replace can replace all the six with nine. Replace if, replace all the elements that's bigger than 80 with nine. Replace copy does both replacing and copying. It replaces its six with nine and then save the result at vec2. It also has a generalized form of replace copy if. Number seven, remove. Remove can remove all the items that equal to three. Remove if removes all the items that's bigger than 80. Remove copy 
makes a copy of the elements in VAC that's not equal to 6 and save it in VAC2. So VAC2 has the unremoved items and VAC is not changed. It also has a generalized form of remove copy if. Unique removes all the consecutive equal elements. It also has a generalized unique which lets you define what equal means. In this example, it removes elements whose previous element is less than itself. Unique copy removes the consecutive equal elements in VAC and then save the result in VAC2. So at the end, VAC2 has a unified vector and VAC is unchanged. It has a generalized form of the same name. Now let's look at the order changing algorithms, which include reverse, rotate, permute, shuffle. They change the order of the elements in a container, but not necessarily the elements themselves. First one is reverse. The function reverse reverses the order of the elements. In this example, it reverses the data from vec.begin plus 1 to vec.end minus 1. So it is this range of the data that will get reversed. And this is the result. Reverse copy will copy the reversed data to a different location. So in this example, the reversed data is copied to VAC2. Second one is rotate. The function rotate rotates the data from VAC.begin to VAC.end until the data of VAC.begin plus 3 becomes the first one. So this range of data is rotated to the front and this range of data is rotated to the back. Rotate copy will copy the rotated data to a different location. And in this example, the rotated data will be copied to VAC2. And the content of VAC is unchanged. VAC is not rotated. And same thing in the reverse copy, the VAC is not reversed. Next, permute. Next permutation changes the data into lexicographically next greater permutation, and prev permutation changes the data into lexicographically next smaller permutation. Lexicographical comparison compares data one by one from beginning to the end until a difference is found. So 1, 2, 3, 5 is less than 1, 2, 4, 4, and 1, 2 is less than 1, 2, 3 because 1, 2 has one less item. So when the data is sorted in the ascending order, it is lexicographically smallest, and when the data is sorted in descending order, it is lexicographically greatest. So next permutation changes the data into next lexicographically greater permutation, and prev permutation changes the data into next lexicographically smaller permutation. Both functions have generalized form with the same name, which let you provide your own comparison function. Number four, shuffle. The shuffle functions rearrange the elements randomly. What they typically do is swap each element with a randomly selected element. The random shuffle function will shuffle this range of data randomly. And the generalized random shuffle function allow you to provide a random number generation function. C++11 provides a shuffle function that takes a random engine as a parameter. We'll talk about this guy in the future video, but for now, all you need to know is it provides a better random number generation function. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so when I post a new video, you will be updated. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and see what I'm offering today. Bye-bye.